Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and welcome to the Ryzen 3 budget build. Hi, and welcome back to the channel. Now, we did a Intel based uh, Coffee Lake build actually previously in the video, so you can check that out in the links up, up there. Um, that turned out to be not quite so great. It was a good price and we got a lot of kit for our money, but for me personally, there was instability. Couldn't work out whether it was the motherboard, the processor or the hard drive. There was definitely issues going on. Um, so unfortunately it had to go back, which is sad for the Coffee Lake, but it's good for the Ryzen. So to replace that and to kind of start a game from scratch to do the budget build, this time round, different case. So although this time we're definitely on a budget, just because we're on a budget doesn't mean it has to look awful. So we're going for a themed color build. Now we're going for black and red. So for the build, we've got the Rio Toro CR500 case in black and red. And this has got amazing airflow and comes with red fans included. It comes with a tempered glass side panel. So you can see all the stuff inside, so it's gonna look really nice. So we're using a Ryzen 3 1200. Now that I got off Amazon as a warehouse deal. That was 62 pounds reduced, so that's a pretty good price for that processor. Um, next up, we've got the Zotac GTX 1050Ti. Now this is a great little graphics card, it doesn't require any, ex any extra PCI power, uh, it just takes it from the PCI Express port on the board, which is good, which, well, it's good for the power supply we're using, which I'll get onto later. But this is a great little card, especially for budgets if you're building a new system. I'd put this on for about 120. Um, you could always sacrifice this for a second hand card if you're on a budget with something like the GTX 970 which to be fair as a second hand purchase would be a much much better option probably about twice the power of this but if you want to buy new or new with a warranty then this is probably your best bang for your buck. Uh, memory wise we've got the Vengeance LPX DDR4 it's only 2133 RAM so the Ryzen processor isn't going to benefit from that extra bandwidth in the memory but we may have a go at overclocking it and see what we can get out of that RAM. But that RAM was exceptionally cheap at the moment. That was on a uh, Facebook group, £35 for an 8 gig stick. Now I've got two there because obviously the Ryzen likes dual channel, but because this is a budget build, I may just go with the one stick, maybe the two, I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you think and uh, maybe I'll change it after and do an update. But I think for the level of performance we're gonna get overall, the difference between single channel and dual channel isn't gonna be massive, so to save that extra 35 pounds, or in your case, it may be a lot more expensive wherever you are, um, I probably will go just with a single stick, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, moving on, we've got a Kingston 240 gig SSD. Now that was a great deal as well, 34, uh, sorry, 39 pounds and 94 pence, I think it was on Amazon, uh, quite a strange price, but uh, brand new, never been opened, not a warehouse deal or anything, just a, a great price on Amazon. So really pleased with that. Uh, moving on, we've got the Fatality ASRock AB350 Gaming K4. Now this board is awesome. It's black and red themed. It's got RGB. It's got uh, LED illumination around the heat sinks. It's got a lot of accent colors around it. Again, in that black and red theme. It's got a lot of kind of gaming orientated features like the, uh, the uh, USB ports and the mouse ports are all kind of uprated or have got something special going on. So they're supposed to be really good for gaming but I think it's just a little bit of market employ. But again, it's a really nice board and it only costs about 65 pounds, which on our Amazon warehouse deal was fantastic. I've looked inside the box and everything is there brand new. The IO shield's still in the wrapper, got both the M.2 slot drive uh, screws. So everything in there is basically brand new. I don't know why they've reduced it so much, but hey, it's all the better for the, for the bargain build we're doing. Uh, moving on next, power supply. Now this is an older Novatec unit, which is a uh, semi-modular, so you can see there. The cables are ketchup and mustard, but a lot of those are gonna be covered up in the basement in the case, so it should be uh, still pretty nice looking. What I will do for um, this power supply, actually for the EPS connectors, only a four pin, so I've had to buy a four pin to eight pin adapter, so it'll fit on this board. That again was another couple of pounds, but it's, uh, it's not really a kind of a deal breaker. This power supply was about 25 pounds, so I'm gonna use that one to try and save some money rather than going out and buy another one. Um, you can pick up Really good power supplies, around about the sort of 300, 400 watt mark for about 25 pound. One I've reviewed previously, which you can check in the link up there, is the Be Quiet. The uh, 
I think it was the, the 8 series, 400 watt. It was a really good power supply, nice cable in, um, all captive cables unfortunately, but still a great power supply for about £25, so definitely check that out. So that pretty much rounds up all the bits I've got here. Um, oh, actually, this one as well. This is the, uh, I always get the name wrong on this, Tincam, as in Tincam Alley. You know where you used to shoot cans off the top of a piece of uh, plastic with a light gun? No, you're probably too young to remember that. But that is the Tincam RGB set. Now, this uh, side panel, the uh, TG side panel, is quite, uh, quite transparent. There is a little bit of a smoke tint to it. So depending how bright the LEDs are on the on the motherboard and the fans, we may need a little bit of extra light just to highlight some of the components. So that may well be going in as well. Now with that, you get two LED strips, which are RGB, um, and you're looking at about 11 pounds for that. So that may or may not come into the equation. Um, but if you take out that, take out a stick of RAM, with the bits we've got here, actually, sorry, I should have mentioned the Freezer uh, eSport. Now the Freezer eSport is there for one reason and one reason only, is because the Ryzen uh, 3 1200 only comes with a stock fan, which, yeah, is fine in normal use, but for overclocking, if you want to squeeze as much as you can out of it, you're going to need a little bit more horsepower. Now the, the eSport I've got in black and white, which doesn't really fit in with the build, so it may or may not go in, but depending on what results we get with the stock cooler, we may swap out the stock cooler for the eSports. Now the eSports fan, that's the twin fan version, so that'll keep the temperatures right down but that is gonna add an extra 40 pounds to the build. So if you take off the, uh, the tin cam RGB, exclude the RAM and take that out of the equation. So just this lot here with the case, uh, we were looking just over about 350 pounds for the lot. So for a, uh, a pretty decent spec machine with a lot of headroom for further upgrades and definitely fine for 1080p gaming, for 350 pounds, uh, you get a lot for your money, especially if you shop around and get some good bargains. So that's been the intro of all the bits. Best thing to do now is uh, get this thing built. Okay, so that was a quick change. I got my glasses on. Uh, we've had some kerfuffle happen right now. This was supposed to be a time lapse of the build and me putting the bits on the board and everything uh, looking pretty slick. But unfortunately, we've got the processor out. And like I said before, this is an Amazon uh, return. So there were some slight issues with it. Now, some of which was there was heat paste actually in with the pins where I'd imagine the previous owner had wiped the paste off and it'd go around the side. Whilst they've done that, they've actually damaged or bent some of the gold pins that hang on the bottom. So hence why I've got the glasses on, and we've got a razor blade out and all sorts trying to get the, uh, the pins to line up again. Now I did contact Amazon on their uh, chat, online web chat, and they were fantastic. They said, look, we're really sorry this has happened. Um, what do you want to do? I said, well, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm, I like to have a bit of a tinker with PC stuff, so I can actually have a go at trying to rectify the damage to the pins and give it a clean, and hopefully it, it'll be all right. So they offered me a 15 pounds discount. So on a 50, no, actually, what was it? 62 pound processor, they've offered me 15 pounds off. So that takes it down to, what, uh, 47 pounds for a Ryzen 3 1200. Now that is assuming that it actually works. So what they've done is they've actually made an agreement. So they've offered me the partial refund, which is great. So um, if I plug it in and everything's fine, we're all good. But they've said if I try to fix the pins and it still doesn't work when I fire it all up, they will give me a full refund of the complete purchase price. So it's a win-win situation as far as I'm concerned. So it's a big thumbs up for Amazon and their support there. Uh, I know a lot of people have bad things to say about Amazon, but I've got only good things to say and go and buy the experience I've just had. Um, I don't think you could possibly ask for more. I don't think you'd get that kind of level of support from a, um, a high street retailer, for example. So kudos to them. So anyway, that is the story of the processor and that is why we are not further ahead with this than what we should be by now. So onward and upward. Okay, so the motherboard's in and we've connected up most of the I.O. We haven't connected up the uh, the power supply yet, but I thought I'd give you a quick heads up of this chassis layout and some of the quirks I found already actually in this build. 
So first of all, looking at the, uh, along the top of the basement there, there's actually no room whatsoever underneath this motherboard to uh, pass the cables along nicely. So they're a little bit bunched up there at the bottom, which, which is really unfortunate. I was trying to go for a really clean looking build on this. Um, don't get me wrong, it's not, it's not awful. And with the side panel on and when the lights are on, it will probably not be noticed at all, but it just would have been nice if they'd have put the, uh, the motherboard pillars and the IO shield just about three or four millimeters higher, which they've got more than enough room to do at the top because you've got no way you can put a radiator or anything in the top of here. So shifting the motherboard up about five mil would have made that such an easier job to do or cut out some more grommet holes on the bottom to pass the cables through would have made it a much nicer job. But otherwise, other than that, it's been, uh, it's been fantastic. And we've got the USB connected up here, which uh, doesn't look too great, but it's not that bad either. So next to do, power supply time. Okay, so we were a little bit further forward, so we've got the power supply in now, as you can see by this uh, little bit of ketchup and mustard going on, which really, really is starting to uh, make my heckles rise. Also, the, uh, the connector at the top there isn't great, but I don't think it's gonna to be too distracting in the grand scheme of things. And being that most of the wires I've managed to get on show there are either black, orange, or red, it kind of does go with the, uh, the ready orange theme that we've got going on here. Already the ASRock board itself is actually kind of mutilated the red theme a little bit by having a, a kind of like quite a, a brightish red there and almost going burgundy into that area. And then you've got the kind of chrome red on the heat sinks. So um, we've got a few different types of red going on at the moment anyway. So hopefully when the red LEDs are on, they should all blend in nicely or hopefully, fingers crossed. But anyway, we've got the, uh, the power supply in. It's quite an easy thing to do. There's still quite a lot of room in the basement down there for extra cables and tying the cables off at the rear was uh, pretty straightforward too. So the last thing we've got to do now is remove these horrible uh, back plates, which I really, really should have done before I started this because they're a real pain to get out of the uh, system when a motherboard's kind of resting up against them. So I'm gonna wrestle with those for a little bit, then put the graphics card in, and then we're pretty much ready to go. So we'll see you in a bit. So that was actually easier than I expected. The uh, the back plates, actually, you can remove them whilst the motherboard is in there. There's a good couple of millimeters clearance between the, uh, the blanking plate and the motherboard, so it's quite easy to twist them off. So that went a lot easier than expected. So we've got the graphics card in and we are now finished. So we've got our Corsair RAM, we've got our Ryzen 3 20, uh, Ryzen, I want to say 2200G. I wish it was a 2200G, that'd make life a lot easier. It's a Ryzen 3 1200. I've got our Zotac 1050 Ti in place. And because it's a very short board, it leaves this area open so we'll be able to see the LEDs flashing away on there, which I believe they do flash. I hope they flash. It'd be nice if they do, but hey, whatever. We've also put in the uh, RGB LED strip along the top there from Tincam. Now, you don't have to use the controller that comes with that, so I've plugged it into the RGB header on the top of the board uh, so we can have direct control over it so we can make it breathe or whatever we want it to do. And if I decide on my little board with the red, I can always introduce a, uh, a little bit of color through that, maybe a white. Um, yeah, I think a little bit of white wouldn't go amiss in there, just to lighten it up a little bit. But anyway, so that's done. So I'm gonna get the side panel back on and uh, fire it up and fingers crossed, even though the, uh, the processor had bent pins, hopefully it's gonna work. Ah, uh, scared. Here we go. Okay, it lives. The black and red monster is breathe, breathing into life.
brought into life, breathing life, whatever. It's working. Well, I hope it's working. It powers up at least anyway, so that's a good start. We haven't plugged it in yet, haven't done any of the BIOS settings or anything, literally just turned it on just so you can see the lights. And you can see the nice L, uh, let's see, L Toro, <laughs> the Rio Toro logo on the front there, looking quite nice. And the fans glowing nice and red. And they do seem to be pulling in quite a lot of airflow, as I'll demonstrate with these pieces of paper. So there's definitely pulling in quite a bit of airflow there. Try doing that with your master box light. Mm, you know what's going to happen there. Not a lot. So there is actually a considerable amount of air being pulled through there. And there is actually vents on the side. So it's not as if I'm choking it completely. It's still pulling a little bit of air in from the side. So it is passing through a lot of air. And I've noticed already there does seem to be a positive pressure. There is a little bit of heat rising from the top of the grill. And coming out the back, you can hear a whoosh of the fans. The fans themselves aren't noisy per se, but there is a kind of noise of air traveling through the system. But once we get into the BIOS and do some settings and install windows and all that kind of thing, we'll change the BIOS uh, profile for the fans and bring the noise down a little bit so it's not gonna be distracting as a media sensor. But what do you think? It looks pretty nice. I'm, I'm pretty impressed. And the inside, I'm not sure if you're gonna get a very good picture of this because it's gonna be quite reflective because of the lights. But actually inside, I think it's turned out pretty well. Um, got the RGB, well, it's actually R at the moment, but the B and the G have gone. But the, uh, the R LED at the top is uh, breathing away, which is uh, quite discreet. And I am considering putting another one in towards the bottom just to highlight it a bit. Uh, I did try putting it actually in that bottom gully where I suggested in the previous video that there was a hole there so you can run an RGB through. But the RGBs I've got are actually quite fat, so getting it to actually fit in that bit at the bottom is a little bit tight and it wouldn't really disperse the light particularly well, so I've left that as is. I've um, got our AMD fan. I've reorientated the fan because the AMD logo was on the side, not upright. That was driving me slightly mad, so I've changed that, so that looks nice. We've got our Zotac 1050Ti in there to power all this, and it's, uh, yeah, it's not looking too bad. There's a very faint glow behind the uh, Fatality heatsink, um, which I suppose really in the grand scheme of things is not the end of the world. I would have preferred it to be a little bit brighter, but saying that we have got a 150 watt bulb there, 150 watt bulb there, another 150 watt bulb there. So it's not uh, it's not entirely surprising that it's not shown up as much as it would. And it'll probably look a lot better in a, a darker surrounding. But all in all, I'm really impressed. The case has done, uh, done us proud. The uh, Rio Toro CR500, I think has actually turned out really well. It's uh, for the £44 that you can get it for on Amazon from uh, well, third-party sellers like uh, CCL, etc. It's a really good case for the money. The glass, again, I would have preferred it to be slightly lighter, the smoke tint on the glass, if I'm honest. Um, but the plus side of the tint on this is it does cover up a multitude of sins, such as the cables not being able to be routed properly at the bottom and the, uh, the ketchup and mustard cabling, which... I really wish power supplies that had that would be just destroyed, thrown into a big skip somewhere and buried. But that's the thing with these budget systems we build. We have to make do with what we got. But overall, I think this case looks really nice and I'm very happy with it. So this has been uh, our AMD Ryzen budget build, which is uh, kind of hopefully going to crush the uh, Intel build that we built previously. I'll be doing some benchmarks on this after I've installed Windows and I'll give you an update on how all that goes. But at the moment, uh, this has been the AMD Budget Build. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and I hope you've enjoyed the ride. Thanks for watching.